Welcome to a tutorial video on learning Twine. In this video I'm going to cover the story list. When you're using Twine, when you first open it, you view this, the list of stories. At this point in this example, I have only a single story and it tells me I have one story. If I had more, it would tell me I had multiple stories and I'd also be able to, moving across from left to right, sort them. I can either sort them by edit date, the least, the most recent versus the least recent, and also my name, in this case, alphabetically A to Z, or if I click it, Z to A. It's the same with edit date. I can change this back and forth and change this back and forth. Although there's only one story currently, so the sorting possibilities are very slim at the moment. Over on the right hand side, there are numerous different options that are also shown as part of the story list. We can add stories, the plus story button. We can also import from file. If there's a previously published file or Twine archive collection of files, we can import those into both the online, what I'm currently showing, as well as the desktop versions of Twine. This allows us to take other files, import them, edit or change them in some way, and then export them again or publish them again. This is one way to allow collaboration using Twine, where one author can work on a file, send it to another author, you can then import it, change it, and then publish it and send it back. So collaboration allows through both importing and publishing files. Underneath that is the archive. This takes all of the stories currently available in either the online version or the desktop version currently shown in the story list, collects them all into an archive file, and then downloads them. This allows us to, as previously talked about with importing, import all of the stories again. This is also a very good way to create backups of different files. You can archive all of the stories, save them in some place, and then continue working. If anything happens to the online version or a desktop version, or you have to move between computers, the archive of all the stories will allow you to keep that backup. Underneath that is formats. What this means is story formats. As you can see, in this current version of Twine 2.2.1, there are currently several different default story formats that come with this version of Twine. I have Harlow 2.1, Harlow 1.2.4, Snowman 1.3, Sugarcube 2.21.0, and Sugarcube 1.0.35. Each of these are, in the cases of Harlow and Sugarcube, different branches of the same story format, each of which has slightly different functionality. But I can choose them here by selecting one of these as used the default. That is, when I create a story, it will then become the default story format. And of course, I can go in and change them at any time. At the top, the next tab over from story formats is proofing formats. By default, it comes with paper thin. That is a proofing format for Twine. When you click on the proofing format instead of the publishing file, it will give you just the text of a story minus any of the story, JavaScript, or the story style sheets. It will just give you the text that is within the passages. You can also, moving over to the last tab, add a new format. If you come across a story format online, or one recommended from people or one you really like, you can import that format and use it within your stories and the online version that I'm showing here, as well as the desktop version. And there are a few different other story formats that are out there that you might want to use depending on your project. Closing this, we can move down to language. Language allows you to use the Twine editor, that is what we're looking at here, in different languages. A number of different languages are supported including German, Italian, French, and you can choose here depending on what you want to do. Coming back, the last thing here in this story list view is help. If I click on this, it will send me to the Twine Wiki, which I'm not going to do at this moment, as well as some work that's been done through a number of different collaborators to try to help new users through learning Twine. Finally, down here, not part of the buttons, but part of the total interface of Twine, is the different themes. You can use the light theme, which is currently shown, or, if you prefer, the dark theme, which gives you a greater contrast for some things, 
as compared to the light theme. Each of you give your different options depending on what you want to do. Finally, as part of the online version, that's part of, that is not part of the desktop version, is space available. Currently I have 100% space available, but if I had a large number of stories, dozen and dozens perhaps, that had large numbers of text and large numbers of things within them, I might have less space. The online version grants you only a limited amount of space. That is, everybody can keep using Twine, but the space available in the current browser is a little limited, which is based on the browser as well as a number of other things and not necessarily based on the space available on the twinery.org site itself. So keep that in mind. You may not have a lot of space, so dozens of stories may not be the best way, but you can always, of course, download the archive of them or use the desktop version of Twine when the compatibility is the same. You can import and export, publish, and import between them. Finally, if you run into a major bug, you can report it, and this will connect you to the GitHub for this Twine editor and the ability to report different bugs or suggest features. And this has been a review of the story list, that is the list of stories, as well as the functionality that's available when you look on the right hand side menu. We can add stories, import from file, download all of these in an archive, look at the different story formats as well as add to them, look at the different languages available as well as choose one as the default, be directed to the Twine wiki to look at some help documents, change the theme back and forth, and in the online version, look at the available space we're currently using, and finally report a bug if we have it. So this has been a review of the story list. Thanks for watching.